I think um, I'm really pleased for the players. I think they've worked exceptionally hard since we've come together in Girona a few weeks ago. And I think we've been progressing each week and aspects of our game have improved each week. But the, the players to have the tangible reward of the victory today against such a good team, um, that's important. And it's also really important for the supporters. Uh, Jamie has said many times about how he wants to make the supporters feel, how he wants the supporters to enjoy it and how bring them on the journey with us. Jamie's spoken about that. And I thought Twickenham, I thought it was magnificent tonight. I think the supporters are left with a smile on their face as well. Um, for us, now we'll enjoy this tonight and then um, ensure we're a bit better next week. A lot of people wrote you off this week. Is it nice to prove some people wrong? Um, for us, just, we concentrate very much upon our preparation the team's been progressing and the team's <coughs> progressed each week and step forward now sometimes you get sometimes it's really visible and everybody sees it and everybody talks about it and sometimes it's not as visible sometimes you, it, it's not as over but the team's been progressing and that's been the message we've been talking about keep moving forward and that's that's what we'll continue to do we know we've got a long way to go as a team we're four games in and um but on this journey, this is, this is another step in the right direction. Is that the best performance since you've taken charge? Um, I, I think right now, if you, I said this earlier in the week, there's been a couple of phases. One was in the first period was getting a team ready to, to try and win the World Cup. And now we're four games into trying to build a new team and a new way. And I've talked about the evolution of the team. And this is an important step in the evolution of the team. Um, but that's what it is, it's a step. Now we need to take another step next week. You and Andy Farrell exchanged a few words in the time of half time. Everything okay there? Absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, uh, Andy and I have known each other for a long time. We played alongside each other um, for England. Um, and we both represented England at the 2007 World Cup. So we go back a long way. And what he has done with that Ireland team is just incredible very special they are a, they are an incredible team and I thought today was a very special test match are you able to share what it was about no it's between Andy and I there's no there's no I know people want to read into things like that I, I think Andy and I have a, have, a, have a good relationship we were co-captains together at Saracens as players um, we coached together on the Lions in, in 2017 and I have incredible respect for him and what he has done with, with that team, uh, which is, a, a, as I say, a phenomenal team. Jamie, you guys have said this performance is coming. How pleased are you that it has come and how proud are you of the guys? Oh, I'm so proud. Uh, I think it's probably one of the most emotional and proud days of my career, for sure. Um, I think the reason for that is is because... You know, there were a lot of doubters after that Scotland performance, and probably rightly so. Um, but at the same time, internally, you know, we didn't listen to the noise out, outside of what we knew was important. And um, for us to go out there and do that to a team like Ireland, who, for me, are the best team in the world at the minute, um, that was a really, really special day. And, you know, we, we spoke a lot about making Twickenham a really tough place to come and play, and I thought we did that today. You copped a lot of flack after Murrayfield. Do you feel some of it was unfair? Um, look, I just think, you know, we, we went there to win. I think whenever you play for the England rugby team, if you don't win, you cop flack. Um, I think that's just the way, the way it is. At this, what, was, what I was most pleased about was the way that we got together, made sure that we were very clear about how we needed to move forward. And um, I think you saw a lot of the steps today. Um, I think there's still a lot to come. Um, it wasn't the perfect performance by any means, but, you know, there's there was probably a lot of criticism around our attack and to go up against Ireland and score three tries is, uh, you know, not many teams do that. Thank you. Jack, Tony, <coughs> when, you've looked, when you look at Ireland um, over the Six Nations, their set piece and the chaos around the breakdown that they created has been absolutely outstanding, but you basically beat them at their own game today. Was there a great focus in that chaos? And also as part of that, uh, just talk about what George Martin uh, brings just in sheer... Oof, oof, uh, years at uni for umph is it <laughs> lovely word that that is George Martin in a nutshell um, no look I, I think you know we were very clear around you know how Ireland are a fantastic team like you said they make a mess of the breakdown 
um, but also their set piece is very, very strong. I think you've seen that in, in their performances, not just the Six Nations in the World Cup and previous. Uh, um, so we had a great plan. Um, uh, line out gurus had a great plan uh, around what we uh, what we wanted to go and get after. I thought we scrummed well today, um, but whenever you play against Ireland, th there is an increased focus around being really tight and assured at the breakdown. I thought we were that. The way that George Martin came into the team today, having not played a huge amount of rugby over the last few weeks and belted people, um, he led the way in that respect. And you know, he's a man of few words, but when he goes out there and performs like that, he's a real leader in this team. Yeah, he's he's just a, a real high quality, world class player in my eyes, and you know he's as sharp as there is around the breakdown. And um, you know we wanted to try and move the ball fast today. We've spoken about how we want to try and move the ball a little bit more in attack, and um, I thought that he was at the heart of that. Him and George and Marcus coming on at the end um, were really fantastic in that area. I'd say the noise at the end probably uh, says yes. Nick, then Will. I think the thing that pleased me the most um, was post the defeat in Scotland when I've seen teams get pulled in all kinds of different directions. I saw that in my time as a player here, I've seen it in my time as an assistant coach here. And what pleased me the most is that the players stayed absolutely true to the path we're trying to follow and tried to take the next step of progress and they applied themselves to it. We asked them again to do things a little bit differently and they did that. And led by the man next to me, that, that takes a lot of courage to try and do things a bit differently. And um, they've done that. And we'll do that again this week. Um, on an improved performance next week against France. Um, we'll be watching their game tomorrow um, with keen interest. They've made a few changes in their team and going down to Lyon to play the game. So it's a different challenge as well, not been there. And I think it promises to be a, a real formidable test match. Hopefully another great test match like like today. How are you fixed for on the injury Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a medical report. Um, Slady took a bang in Scotland and, and worked really hard to recover from it and um, took a knock today. I don't know whether it's related, but um, so that's why he came off. Um, Chandler looks like he's injured his calf. I don't know how bad, but it certainly didn't look like it's one that's going to turn around in a week. But I, I have no idea how bad that is. Um, and I think, um, I think, I think okay. I think it was he took he made that tackle in the first half and took a, a bit of a, a stinger. But I don't, I don't think it's anything, anything worse. Than that. I say I haven't had a full medical report. And just on Marcus Smith. Well, see, three things. One, um, the intensity that the players had. <coughs> from the first minute to the last minute. I thought that was a step forward and I think that's going to become something that's a, um, a hallmark, a trademark of this team, the, the intensity with which they play. The, the second thing that's tactically in the middle of the game, Ireland adjusted what they did tactically in the middle of the, of the game, that middle third, and the players needed to attend to that on the grass and, and they did that really, really well. That's a change a little bit how we'd intended to play. It was a different type of game from Ireland. It was very smart by them what they then did um, and it needed a big adjustment for, for, for our team uh, led by Jamie. And the third thing then, I don't know, I've used this expression a, few, a, a, a good number of times, is finding a way to win. And this is a test for rugby. You'll find a way to win. Um, we'll, be, we'll improve as a team. We'll be better as a team. Um, but fundamentally, and finding yourself in situations where you've got to come through them and find a way to win, that's important. And the team did that again tonight. Thank you.
Okay, Will then David. Jamie, can you just talk us through the, the bedlam of that last few minutes? You seem to enjoy it. There's a good clip of you going to bear at the end. Can you talk us through how it went for you? Uh, I don't like watching. Um, but, like, just... I was in awe of the boys on the field, like, the composure they showed, but also going out there to attack the game, going out there to win the game. You know, there are a couple of times there where, you know, we had a knock on, they kicked the ball out. You know, we just, we we didn't panic at any stage. And, you know, I have to admit it was a, it was a bit emotional at the end because um, of everything that's gone on. But, you know, I think the, the most important thing was I was just so proud of the players on the field, the way they applied themselves. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was never in doubt, I suppose. Have you felt uh, I think there were probably there've probably been games since since that where we, we have tried to move the ball and I think are you talking about the attack in particular? Yeah, well just the intensity around the whole thing, it seemed like we really came out that part. I think we've played at a good intensity since twenty nineteen, but um I, I understand what you're trying to say. I think you know we that is the, that is what we've been trying to do. That is what we endeavour to do. That is um, the sort of team that we want to be. And um, the way that we went out there and had the courage, like Steve said, to keep trusting in the plan uh, and executing the plan. Um, and when you've got special players like Mark Smith and Manny Ferroboso and all those other guys, you know, special things will happen. And um, yeah, it was a really pleasing result. Just how much belief will that give you? Just quite a young team on the field right at the end. To get that job done against you, calling the best team in the world in the week. Yeah, I, well, like I really hope so because you know it, I think it can really bring the team together. I think we've had a huge amount of belief in what we're doing and how we're trying to play the game. But I think that almost gives us um, even more confidence to go out and do that. And you know, like I said, we weren't perfect by any means, but um, we're going to look to be better again going going against France in France. We know how tough that's going to be, and um, but. You know, it's it's an exciting opportunity for us to go and do that, and I think it's important for us to celebrate tonight. Um, and then all focus will go to France on uh, tomorrow afternoon. Last one from you, David. Uh, Steve, um, forgive my ignorance on this, but you mentioned um, Ireland doing something different, and you your team having to react on the hoop or on the grass to it. What did Ireland do differently that they haven't done in previous games, and what did you do? to capture it. Mm. So Ireland's attack has been phenomenal. I think I, I said this earlier in the week, their, the way they get out of their half, using particularly James Lowe, is really effective. I think secondly, I said then about the pressure they put on your ball with the breakdown, um, their jackal, their blast, it's, it's excellent. What well, they do, choke tackle, it's different every time. And the third area I talked about was their attack. And I talked about how they've got a great passing game, make very few handling errors, create lots of one-on-ones and play a great phase attack. And what I saw is they started kicking a bit less, less off James Lowe, started kicking a bit more off nine, started playing less phase, started going more contestable kicking. And so the middle of the game became a bit more like an arm wrestle. And, and ultimately the, um, two of their tries came from a situation similar where a kick from nine to then either a miss by us or a, or then us giving a penalty away at the next ensuing breakdown led to situations for them to score two tries. I thought it was really smart what they did. And our guys on the pitch just adjusted, had to deal with it. So the game changed from what it looked like in the first 20 to what it looked like then from about 25 to 55. It was a different type of game then.